hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters welcome to my january favorites i have not done a favorites video in months this year i want to do a favorites video every month that is the goal whether i will actually manage to do that remains to be seen but whatever um that's the plan do the favorites every month um i've got a bunch of favorites here some of them are things that i purchased you know sort of latish last year like in october november december and some things are more recent um the things that i purchased late last year i i just keep coming back to them like i'm just i'm obsessed with them there's two things in particular i think yes two things and i will let you know when they pop up but first i want to talk about this because it's a little bit messy and it's fresh out of my shower this is the Tender is the Night Naked Shower Cream from Lush. And this comes from their Valentine's Day collection, 2018. And this just, the scent of this kills me in the best possible way. So basically it is, um, it's a shower cream. So if you're not familiar with what shower creams are from Lush, it's like a shower gel, but it's a richer formula. Um, they're a little bit more hydrating. And this is a solid version, basically, so it comes without packaging. Um, the shower creams are usually in bottles. The scent of this, oh, I don't even know, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like baked goods, like it reminds me of um, when you pull a sponge cake out of the oven and you get that whiff of like toasty baked goods, but also there's some floral notes in there and they're like a little bit spicy. I just, the scent of this is amazing. I freaking love it. I don't know if that is going to become part of their permanent line. Um, I hope it is because the scent is just divine. But if you want one, I would suggest picking one up before the 14th of February because at this point, I think they're limited edition. The two things that I've had since like late last year that I am absolutely obsessed with and I just keep coming back to them. Um, this year I'm doing like a low buy so I'm minimizing what I'm purchasing. I'm trying to appreciate my collection um, and I've been when it comes to like using eye products especially eye palettes I have so many like I did a list of them. I've got over a hundred. It's problematic. Um, I've been trying to sort of rotate my way through them and I plan on doing that for the rest of the year. But I keep coming back to these two products and I've been doing that ever since I purchased them last year. First one is the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk Palette. This thing is fucking phenomenal. I love it. Now, the mattes, the mattes are all right. I like the colors of the mattes. Um, I don't think the formula of the mattes is amazing. However, I will say they repress perfectly. So this palette we used in an episode of the Makeup Breakup and we were like, look, we'll just destroy a couple, see how they repress, blah, blah, blah. We suspect there is a deficiency with the weight of this palette, but the way that we went about destroying it, we weren't able to confirm it. Anyway, um, Two of the mattes that we repressed were Desert Sand and Blazing. And they, I don't know if you guys can tell, but they do not look like they've been destroyed and repressed. They haven't cracked. They haven't come away from the sides of the pan. They are perfect. And the same goes for the metallics. So we did Blood Moon, Twilight, Angelic, and I think Retrograde. And they just, like... This palette looks like any other palette that you would buy in the store. It does not look like we fucking dug eyeshadows out of the pans and then repress them. This thing repress like a dream. And also the metallics and the like duochromes. Oh my god, they're so beautiful on the eye. They are just amazing. I keep coming back to this palette. I can't stop. It just, it makes me so happy. I feel like with this palette I can create really um, interesting and pretty looks 
with just a couple of shades. You don't need to sit down and add six or seven fucking eyeshadows to your face to get something that looks intricate with this. And I love it. I do think it's extremely over fucking priced, but mm, god damn, I love this. If you if you think that the um like the shimmers and the metallics in here are speaking your name um, and you kind of like the mattes as well. I would definitely like, if you see this on sale, I would fucking snap it up. Um, I think it's worth it on sale. At $95, which is what it retails for in Australia, I do think it's heavily overpriced, but yeah, this one, I love it and I can't put it down. The next item that I've not been able to put down is the Colourpop Dusk Till Dawn set. I don't even know if they still sell this. Maybe I should have a look. It looks like this is no longer on their website, but I'm going to talk about it anyway because I'm fucking obsessed with it. So essentially it is a six piece set, <laughs> goodbye, of their Super Shock shadows. And all of the shades in here are sort of like a sparkly, reflective, duochrome goodness. It makes my brain fizzle. What I love about this set is that, similar to the Huda Beauty palette, I can whack one of these over the eyelid, maybe with like something darker and matte blended out in the crease, and it looks like I've created something amazing, and I literally put no work into it, which I love these days. Like, I'm pretty time poor. I still want my eye makeup to look interesting, um, but I don't, I don't want to put in the work. I don't have time to spend 20 minutes blending out eyeshadows on my fucking eyes every day. So stuff like this makes achieving that sort of look easier. One in particular that I love is Half Light. And this is interesting because in person it looks sort of like this, I don't know, almost brownie, green, reflecty, you know, shifty sort of eyeshadow. But on the skin, and I don't think it really comes off that well on camera, it's got this sort of pale plum base uh, with like a turquoise shift. And it's just, it's phenomenal. It is stunning. I love it. Um, the other shades in there, this one here, it's sort of like, uh, it reflects white to blue to purple. That one's New Magic. Um, there's Goodish in there, which is like a pink and gold. There's Stargirl, and that's more of like an apricot gold. And then down here, we've got Babykins and Sleigh Bells. And I think Babykins is in their standard range, I think. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but anyway, I just, I think this set, was absolutely amazing and they won't bring it back i doubt um and being sold out you know you can't get it now but i think if you are looking for interesting easy to use eye products especially sparkly ones colourpop is a brand to keep your eye on um and i'm on a low buy this year so i know that anything that colourpop brings out um, I most likely won't pick up, but if you're not on a low buy and you are looking to expand your collection, Colourpop is a brand to keep your eye on this year. I promise you, they will bring out some beautiful products and their Super Shock eyeshadows are always a safe bet. They're amazing and I am in love with them. I have a bunch of skincare products here and I think this is actually... It's basically a full routine. It's my full, like, cleanse and moisturize day and night routine. It's actually quite small. Five products, and they're all in my favorites. Not too bad. Um, so this is a Shuramura Skin Purifier Nutri Nectar Cleansing Emulsion. So this is interesting. I picked it up at Sephora, um, and it's an oil in emulsion so when you squeeze it out and i don't want to squeeze it out because i've got nothing to wipe my hands on but it's kind of like i'm going to squeeze it out i have to show you guys it's not a straight up oil you can see how slowly that moves so it's got some viscosity to it it's kind of like 
a gel to oil. So you pop this on and over a full face of makeup or even just dry skin if you're not wearing makeup and you want to cleanse with it and you massage it in and it starts to break down your makeup. Um, it doesn't really thin out at all. It stays quite viscous. Um, but I find that this is beautiful for my dry, tight skin days, which is pretty much every day at the moment. Um, it's really nice and I, I wouldn't say hydrating. Um, it's just, it doesn't upset already dry and upset skin, basically, which is what I've got going on under here. It's not pleasant. Um, but it removes my makeup beautifully, it washes away clean, and I just, yeah, new find. Look, I love the Shuamura cleansing oils. I, They are expensive. I think they're always better to buy in the gigantic bottles because they last so long. But I just find that um, they remove makeup without doing any damage to the skin. Um, they're not drying, they don't sting your eyes. Um, they break down makeup really, really well, and they rinse away quite clean. So I love that one. It's a new finds. I'm excited for it. Adding to my Shuamura oil cleansing collection, which is quite big now. Uspa, or is it U-S-P-A? I don't know. Uh, anyway, I'm going to call it Uspa. This is the Soothing Hydro Mist Rose and Go To Collar. So I use this in two ways. I use it after I have washed my face. Um, either in the evening, I wash my face, take off my makeup, wash my face, and spray this on a cotton pad and take it over my face and neck to make sure I've gotten rid of all of the remnants of makeup. In the morning, I just wash my face and I spritz this and then I go in with moisturizer. And during the day, when my skin is feeling dry or tight, I go in with this. Um, and the reason it's made it into my favorites is because I can spray this over a full face of makeup and once it dries, it doesn't do anything to my makeup. So I've got a couple of like hydrating sprays um, in my stash and if I spray them over my makeup which I've been wearing for half a day I feel like my makeup breaks down quicker. Um, I've also got some of the like thermal waters you know the cans with the water uh, they're very expensive and it's just fucking water. Um, I love them because they can make my skin feel rehydrated um, but they don't fuck with my makeup. However, they're really expensive and I feel like the effects of that hydrating feeling that it gives my skin, it's very short lived. So I'm basically just spraying my damn face all day. This on the other hand, I feel like I can get through, you know, my morning and then when my skin starts to feel tight and uncomfortable, I can spray my face with this and the effects of it lasts throughout, you know, all of the afternoon and into the evening to when I'm basically ready to take my makeup off anyway. Serum. I've got the BioEffect EGF Serum. Uh, and I actually have the eye serum here as well. There it is. So, um, this one I got at an event. This one I purchased myself. Um, the EGF serum and the EGF eye serum are essentially a routine in themselves. So these products are designed to be used on their own. Basically you wash your face, you take a couple of drops of the EGF serum, put it all over your face and neck, you use the eye serum which has this crazy rollable application, you push the bottom and it like dispenses product into the roller ball and then you roll it around your eyes. Um, basically once you put these on you're not supposed to put anything else on over them um, and the results that I get with this I think it was really difficult for me initially to use these and not put something on over them because it doesn't feel like it's enough. It doesn't feel like <laughs> I feel like I need a moisturizer. I'm like this is this can't be enough. But surprisingly enough, 
it is. Um, I found even within just a few days of starting to use these, specifically this one, the eye serum I don't love as much. Uh, but the face serum is just, I don't know, I didn't expect much, but it's it's pretty surprising. Just using a serum on its own, I had softer skin, smoother skin, uh, like the texture felt much smoother. I felt like it helped to plump out um, my lines a bit, especially my smile lines. I do think that this helped bring down like the, I've got under here, you might've seen it in uh, some of my, just doing my makeup videos. I have terrible scars uh, from recent breakouts and I feel like this really helped to sort of bring it down and just relax everything, make everything look a little bit more um, like my skin hadn't just been through a freaking shit show. Um, but I just, yeah, this, I love this. This is amazing. And it's funny, you know, when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, such a small bottle, I'm gonna go through it so quickly. But just like two or three drops for your whole face and neck, it's totally enough. Discovering that a product can be basically a routine in itself was surprising, especially for someone my age. I think the last time I used like a single product for my routine, aside from washing my face, obviously, so I'm talking about like just a moisturizer, the end, I was probably like, 18 or 19 when everything was perfect and tight and amazing and since then I've had to incorporate things into my routine to maintain my skin so being 33 years old and just using a serum after I wash my face is it's kind of crazy um, and to actually still see results like see your skin improve with just one product and I mean the eye serum as well um, but this came later I used to just put this around my eyes as well um, yeah just having that as a routine and seeing improvements I what I was surprised but I love this stuff it's very expensive which makes me hate it not really I still love it um, it's yeah it's just it's fantastic also I only use this at night I don't even use this during the day so once a day seeing improvements with a product it's pretty crazy my last skincare product is the dr. MJ Betox control cream so I don't actually know much about this product I don't know what it's designed to do it is a Korean product um, and basically on the front of the jar it says healthy condition skin cream contains bee venom to soothing and balance the skin their words not mine um, but essentially I I've, I've been trying to find I've got a huge stash of moisturizers um, and I've been trying to find moisturizers that offer a lot of hydration without being greasy heavy or slick on the skin and the last one that I finished up and absolutely adored was a Korean moisturizer so I went through my stash and I pulled out another one and it was a winner so this is I mean it feels just like a standard moisturizer it looks like a standard moisturizer it has a very 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 slight and soft medicinal scent uh, and it's not until you actually put it on your face that you go, mm -hmm, this is lovely. So it spreads and absorbs kind of like a gel moisturizer. However, it's a light cream. Um, it absorbs very quickly, which is lovely. And it doesn't leave my skin feeling slick. However, it does help to maintain hydration for long periods throughout the day without my skin starting to feel tight and I love that. Um, one of my big big issues is using a moisturizer that maintains hydration and moisturization throughout the day without being basically thick and heavy and greasy on my face which makes my makeup 
melt off my face so this one has been a winner I love it I have quite a few more Korean moisturizers stashed away and I think I will stick with them uh, for the foreseeable future my last favorite before I move on to some fails is this guy from Hask it is the argan oil from Morocco fancy uh, intense deep conditioning hair treatment so I finished one of these that was actually the macadamia oil treatment um, and I didn't like it my hair was just like no that does nothing for me however this one does a lot for me this leaves my hair so soft and so smooth and so detangled and just lovely to brush and blow dry and all that good stuff I love this if you are looking for an affordable hair brand uh, this is one to check out let's move on to not favorites in other words fails um, I have all eye products here and the first ones are the Colourpop Supernova eyeshadows I was hoping that these would be similar to the um, Stila Magnificent Metals, the Glitter and Glow eyeshadows, uh, but they're not. They're just, mm, no. They're not, not quite hitting the mark for me. Um, these are fine initially. They go on nicely. They're very pigmented. They're sparkly. They're metallic. They're beautiful, but they fall off in chunks throughout the day and it's not that they like fall off and I get fallout on my face that's not an issue um, I will check my makeup throughout the day and I will have like chunks of product that's just gone off my eyelids and I cannot get these to stay on my face I have you know I've used them with my typical routine um, my typical primer is the Lorac behind the scenes eye primer which I really like it's it hasn't failed me I'm on my second tube and I really like it um, I've also used it with the Too Faced uh, glitter primer glitter glue that stuff is the bomb and it can't even hold these on so I just yeah I don't like these and it's sad I do hope Colourpop will continue to look at this formula and improve on it because they have potential with these and yeah I I hope it gets better but at the moment I don't like these and I won't buy them until someone comes out and says guys these have changed and they are better so that's a shame they've got some beautiful colors I do think their first five which are these ones that were released are very similar in color um, but you know they're they're pretty they just don't work for me so I did talk about the desert dust palette this is the textured rose gold edition which I bought just a couple of weeks after desert dusk um, thinking that this might be as nice as desert dusk it's not I don't like it I don't like it at all um, I don't like the mattes I don't like the metallics I don't like the textured shit these are difficult to work with and I don't like this palette um, I do think that the formula of her eyeshadows were definitely um, adjusted shall we say between this palette and the desert dusk which I think is fantastic um, the mattes in here I just I don't like them I don't feel like they're they don't compare to what's in the desert dusk and like I said earlier I don't think the mattes in the desert dusk are that great um, they're usable 100% no problem there but and these are usable as well I just don't I think they're still lacking even more than the desert dusk um, these sort of like textured shadows are I mean I can work with them but I just I whoa, no this is a very very expensive palette in Australia and I don't think it warrants the price tag um, for me this palette is almost like buying a shitty Dior product um, 
and going, well, all I did was pay for the name because that's how I feel with this palette. I feel like all I did was oh, very sadly pay for the Huda Beauty name, which I don't think is, um, I don't think it, it warrants that sort of price tag. So I wouldn't recommend that and I don't love it. My last fail, haha. <laughs> this is a Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette. Oh my gosh, this is such a beauty to look at. Look at it. It's just. Ah, oh, look, I dug my nail in it. Yay. Oh well, there's an application that I don't have to get through. Uh, never mind. Anyway, there it is. Um, when I saw this palette in store, I was inspired. I was like, oh, I can do things. I can do things and I can make looks and it's exciting. Um, but I actually, when I used it, I, no, no, I don't like it. This, I feel like this is an accompanying palette to a very large collection, basically. On its own, it is very limiting, um, especially for the type of look that I like to do. I'm the type of person who likes to do something matte and dark in the crease and something shimmery and sparkly or colorful on the eyelid and with this palette I feel like my only options for matte in the crease are crucifix which is a dark cool brown that pulls very gray on me um, and if I want to do something really smoky I've got Sabbath which is a matte black uh, which I've got a million of and this is certainly not the best one in my collection and Then I've got exorcism, which is a mid-tone purple So it's not even quite as dark as I personally like in my crease uh, the rest are fairly light and mid-tone things that I would use as transition shades so ashes which does have a um, sort of a turquoise green-ish gold reflect. Uh, there's Martyr and Devil, which you can see are camel and orange. Uh, there's Baptism and Amen as well, which are, um, you know, for me, they're basically highlight shades. And the only other sort of mid-tone color is Revelation, which is a mid-toned warm brown and it has a gold reflect in it. So for me, the mattes in this palette are super limiting. Like there's literally only one shade that I want to use in my crease, which is Crucifix. The rest are black or too light, basically. And then we've got like the colors and the colors are just bland. I just think they're bland um, and when I look at this palette this way as a palette in itself I feel inspired but when I'm actually putting them on my eyes nothing looks the way I intended it to and that frustrates me about this palette um, I have actually tried to film two just doing my makeup looks using this palette and I scrapped both of them because I just, I just couldn't do it. I don't like it. I don't like that palette. If you love it, that's great. I'm so happy for you. I don't really regret purchasing it because, fuck me, that's beautiful to look at. Um, and I have done some looks where I've used another palette for the majority of the look and then just taken like a single shade um, like Rapture which I stuck my nail in um, this one down here Vestment is beautiful as well as Ministry so there are things that I can do with this palette but a palette in itself like on its own it's just it mm, no. Alright guys, so that's it for my favourites and fails of January 2018. I will be back in a month with another favourites and fails. Hopefully no fails. That's hopeful. Fingers crossed. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to let me know what your favourites and fails of January or the recent months were down in the comments section. It is all yours. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.